Hi there and welcome to another Sunday evening here on City TV. Scorecard is live on your screens as we speak now. The Chan tournament has come to an end. Algeria's host and win agenda all but fell short right at the end. I'm um, sure so they will still be happy. They've given us a really good uh, competition. If you saw that closing ceremony, you would think you were watching an AFCON. But this is a Chan tournament. So they have raised the bar extremely high as far as this tournament is concerned. But Senegal, though, first of all, winning an AFCON and then coming on to also win the Chan tournament. So Senegal definitely doing something right as far as the football is concerned. We'll get into that. And then we'll also get into some local football. Accra Hearts of Folk were up against Real Tamale United this weekend. On the foreign front, it wasn't a good weekend for the big boys. Liverpool Football Club are in a sorry state as we speak now. Chelsea were left scratching their heads after spending millions and millions of uh, pounds and dollars on transfer deadline day. And as far as Manchester City and Arsenal are concerned, this were weekends to forget. A lot to digest here on Scorecard today. Do stay with us. The text and WhatsApp lines will be on your screen so you can join us from wherever you are on the continent. Nigeria, Uganda, South Africa. In Ghana, you can join us. Accra, Kumasi, Takradi, uh, the north and everywhere else that you are. Let's get talking. We'll take a quick break here. When we come back, I'll introduce my guest. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. Our good friends are in here. Coach Christopher Nimli, a.k.a. Ni. Abba. No more. You have told me not to introduce you without. without. Exactly. Thank exactly. you very much. Thank me you for. Looking smart tonight. <laughs> As usual. Oh, that's Charlie. what I took for <laughs> Charlie. Yeah. Well, yeah. I like that. Glance over your yeah, shoulder. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be fine. Right oh, Charlie. 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 Look, it's always a pleasure whenever it's time for scorecard. Love it. Yeah. Love it. By the, far. The Jay Nubo, a.k.a. Emmanuel Nubo, is on the show <laughs> tonight. Nubo, it's good to have you here. Yeah. I'm happy to be here, but. No, happy, no, a happy Liverpool fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm officially a student of the game. Yeah, a student no, of the yeah, game. I'm a student of the game. When, I'm when not a Liverpool fan I, any I don't, longer. I don't get it why of late uh -huh. Liverpool supporters are just turning their back on the team. I listen to my boss, Bernard Avle. He doesn't sound <laughs> Liverpool. In Kitia, he doesn't sound Liverpool. You too, you don't sound Liverpool. No, you see? Even Katu for himself. My own, look, look, look at the people who are running away from Liverpool. And we are here. No, you see, when mm -hmm. the team is not doing what is right, that you is need to you support. No, no, no. You see, we can't support when you are when you can see evil. You don't you don't it, walk into it. That's it, how it is. So today, club has become demonic. Oh, yeah. no, you see, <laughs> we say that he has run his race, and like I always say, you are, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. Okay, and that's what he is doing. If yeah. he doesn't leave very soon, this whole project will collapse completely under his head, and everything good he has done will be washed away. Up. But let's get into the Chan tournament, and it ended um, this weekend. Let's start off with the third place games that were uh, that happened. It was Niger taking on Madagascar uh, in the third place game. In the end, Madagascar managing to pip Niger, and then we we'll also get to the final where um, Senegal were up against host nation Algeria. In the end, that game went to penalties, and it was the Senegalese who ended up victors. Let's check out the highlights of both games. And Senegalese football took deliberate steps to advance their game. They are reaping the benefits today. Coach, let me start with you. So, um, Madagascar winning the bronze uh, medal and then Algeria, hard to break for them because they play some really good football. You've always touted them during this competition. Just they didn't have enough to get over the line. Yeah, so, <clears throat> um, the Algerians and the Senegalese told all of us mm -hmm what we are not doing right here in Ghana. Mm. If you watch that final, yeah. which I did from start to finish, mm -hmm. the manner in which the two teams competed with each other, yeah. you could clearly see and understand the level of the African game. Mm. So if you are in Ghana, you are not doing your things right clearly you are going to be lacking behind hmm. if you look at the football that was displayed yesterday yeah the Senegalese knew that they were playing against the host nation mm -hmm. so if you watch the way they approached the game they made sure that at every time t yeah they had men behind the ball they were not complicating issues mm -hmm. 
they saw the error ahead of them. It's in football. When you see the mistake ahead of you, that is where you can deal with it. Hmm. They dealt with it judiciously. Yeah. They were very compact as a unit. And you could clearly see that the longer the game traveled, the more confident they grew in themselves. That, look, we've gotten these guys where we want them to yeah. be. They are now desperate. They believe it is their right to go on and win it. Mm -hmm. But we show to them that we are here to compete. And we'll hang in there yeah. for as long as we can. Yeah. If we are going to lose it, we'll take it all the way to the spot kick. And that is the way I, mean, I prefer coaches who decide to lose final in that manner. Mm. And if you look at the Senegalicos, he always stood on his feet and marshaled his boys. And the timing of his substitution, look, he brought in two 18-year-old. And they were brought in simply because to come and take penalties. Yeah. He brought in a 19-year-old who also came in there to, keep, to, to, to be part of the penalty takers. And when the commentators were saying, it, I said, this is 19, this is 18, yeah. this is 18, I said, wow, these guys could hold their nerves mm -hmm. and just slot the ball into the back of the net like that. On the part of the Algerians, they will say they had the cup in their hands, isn't it? Yeah. But for that player who decided to do the Bruno Fernandes or the Jorginho, I mean, you don't blame him. I don't blame him because throughout the tournament, yeah. that's what he's been doing. Mm -hmm. Every penalty they've, they've been awarded, and it's worked he's for him. gone in there and he's <laughs> done the same, and it's worked for him. And the supporters were all what? Jubilating. Mm -hmm. But when it matters most, mm -hmm. that is where I think the lack of intelligence and the lack of smartness came to the fore. Mm. And I believe that at, usually at this moment or at that stage, coaches would not sit or stand on the touchline and scream at the penalty taker mm -hmm. as to what he should do. Mm -hmm. The responsibility lies in the hands of the penalty taker. He's told that, look, do what you think you can do best yeah. to get us the cup. Unfortunately, when the young man needed his Jorginho or Bruno Fernandez's way of taking the penalty <laughs> key to come to his aid, he deserted him. Yeah. But look, Senegal, I was rooting for Senegal. I wanted them to win it, mm -hmm. and they've done just that. Look, in Ketia, mm -hmm. this is one of the reasons why we should not entertain anybody who is not up to the tax mm -hmm. of running our football. This is one of the reasons why last week I knelt down here yeah. and pleaded with the football people that if they really want to rescue Ghana football, you mean rescue? Rescue Ghana football mm -hmm. from the ditch that <laughs> it finds itself, they should vote out Keto Kreku. Because in Ketia, if you look at the manner in which our players were treated in Algeria, mm -hmm. there was no way they were going to compete the way we all expected them to compete. Mm -hmm. We have an every president who doesn't look completely visionless. <laughs> look at the level of quality displayed Oh, you mean the game changer is visionless? He's completely visionless <laughs> in Ketia. What, what at all has he brought to the table? He's brought nothing but shame, disgrace, embarrassment. Every single tournament, <laughs> from the women's tournament, go through, you can go through the women's tournament. I've gotten the chance to yeah. speak to some of the players of the channel. And I'm stating on this program yeah. that Per diems that belong to the players were did, look they were reduced they were slashed by the people at the Ghana Football Association. Hmm. They were slashed by the look when we're going to play Niger, every player was entitled to one hundred and fifty dollars per day. Mm -hmm. I'm using this program. I'm challenging Ketu Kreku, and then Ed Moaka, who is the team manager of the Black. Galaxies. I'm asking them, is it true that they slash the winning ball, the per diems of the of, of the black galaxy players when we're going to play Niger? Is it true? They have to come out and come and say it is not true. If they don't, we will expose me, Coach Nimli, I will expose them. Because I've spoken to hmm. as many as six of the players, and they both testified that coach, our per diem. That should have been given to us mm -hmm. to at least motivate us to go and play against Niger, where we'll give up our best. We're slashed. Hmm. 
And if you look at the amount of money that was slashed from these boys per diem and given to them, Master, you will cry. Why are we doing this to ourselves? Mm. And I'm putting it on record that mm -hmm. Edwaka, in his own wisdom, has not got the authority, did not have the mandate to have done what he did unless there were powers encouraging him to do those things. Mm. So our football will remain the way it is. Football people, I'm kneeling down on my knees again. I'm begging you people. Sack Ket Ike Okreku. He doesn't deserve to lead mm. Ghana football. Mm. If we don't take a drastic... You see the way I'm talking? Yeah. I am so much annoyed that Madagascar, Niger, yep. Comoros are beating Ghana mm -hmm. with cheeky ease without any resistance. We are unable mm. to repel whatever this country throw at us on the field of play. We are completely clueless because we are being led by a person who has got nothing to offer. That is why we, we have been disgraced in every competition that we've gone to. If what we have been through mm -hmm. or what we are going through is not enough, the football people should keep him at home. That is where mm -hmm. some of us now will now decide who will yeah, help to collapse the game completely. Mm -hmm. As a oh, city, it yes. It helps to collapse the game. <laughs> ah, if they maintain Kato Kregu, me, Coach Nimli, I will never speak any because there's nothing good to speak about their game. The mm. only thing that we are praying for and hoping that the man should be what? Voted out. Thank God we have an election to be held this year. The football people, mm -hmm. we are telling them, look at what Senegal is doing. Mm -hmm. They are African champions. Mm -hmm. They are beach, is it? African yeah, beach be soccer champions. Beach soccer champions. Yep. They are ch champions. It doesn't come on a silver platter. Mm -hmm. yep. It takes proper planning from a mm -hmm. vision leader, a leader with a vision, mm -hmm. a leader with purpose. Mm -hmm. to get your football to reach to be at that level we are being disgraced every now and then my last point i am pleading with the accountant from the ministry of youth and sports i'm pleading with him when he was told by his bosses that go and pay the players yourself go when you give the players the money let them sign on their own he said no the fa has a special arrangement with the players. So I'll give the money to the FA people for them to go and share to the players. Apparently, hmm. when they go sharing the per diem, no more. I'm a true we can be a Chicano. I'm a true we can be a Chicano. I'm saying it on authority. Hmm. I have audios to prove that. Hmm. How can you treat players like this and expect them to go and die for this country? Hmm. You are also collecting your per diem. Hmm. It isn't that they don't take their own. They will take their own. The management members, they take their per diems. You have taken your own. Yeah. We give the players their own too. That one too, you are, you, are you are living on the sweat of these players. Yes, they, you are cheating them and depriving them of what is theirs. Then we are here in Ghana mm -hmm. supporting, in, uh, the, the, lambasting the players left, left, right, center. Algeria, Senegal, mm -hmm. Madagascar, Niger, they are all ahead of us in Ghana. Morocco, dear. Mm -hmm. Look, we were lucky they didn't show up. Yeah. If they had shown up, Mm. We wouldn't have gotten the chance to even play in that quarterfinal. I'm done. Let me take no worse thoughts. <laughs> Coach has said a lot. And it, honestly speaking, if you if you are grading from the national team, women's mm. football, juvenile football, I, I mean, no, our, no, no, our no. football is in trouble. No, 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 well, no, no. I think one thing no, 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 no. one thing this channel has proven or shown us is that the the countries who have put together a system mm -hmm. who are taking their football seriously from mm -hmm. the grassroots, how their local league is performing. Mm -hmm. It's evidence, the yeah, evidence yeah. is being shown yeah. there yeah. from the quality of play, yeah. the, the, the tactical know-how, how, like there's a proper yeah. system yeah. in place. And I think I was, I was, I was talking to Coach Nimi earlier before we came on set that football has reached a stage where talent alone will not take you there. Yes. Nope. If there's no proper no, structure, planning. there's proper no proper structure. planning. There's a whole science to everything. If you mm -hmm. do not inculcate that into your mm -hmm. game, you'll go nowhere. And that's what we are facing now because you, you especially the Ghana Niger game, if you look at the rudimentary errors, it yeah. was as if it was fifty year olds playing football. You kick yeah. the ball, you give the boys all over three hundred dollars. When they <laughs> complain that they are win that their per diem is not up to scratch, then you go by and say, Oh, you're selling for hundred, hundred, hundred and the summer. So what sort of wickedness is that? 
What sort of wickedness is that? Mm. Do you know what the Moroccans are doing now? We are hearing that. They yeah. are setting up another, another football in, Europe, complex, in, yep. Europe. in Europe so that they will, they will bring together all yeah, those Mor Moroccans who are born Living outside Europe. Morocco yep. and teach them the Moroccan way of yeah. doing it. Already they have a big complex. $100,000 per management members. <laughs> you are sharing it with Chicky East. We have a minister, Mustafa Yusuf, who said and approved of this challenge. What? Yeah. These people. A lot of, a lot of wastage in Ghana what is football. That? As far as money is concerned, but that's that's what we are looking at now. Hopefully, we will learn our lessons from this chance tournament mm. and build going forward. Let's get to Accra House of Folk as far as the best power league is concerned. They were up against Real Tamale United. House of Folk missed a chance to pick up three points. They lost the game by one goal to nil. Let's check out the highlights of this one. Referee is not interested in that call. Here is Manaf. That's an awesome goal! Magnificent strike from Abdul Manaf Uma! He saw the goalkeeper off his line and he took the chance. But the ball from Gaddafi was good. Just look at Manaf, see the ball bounce. So a wonder goal scored there, and it was enough to give um, RTU three points on the board. I uh, could just brief thoughts on that one before we go. Hearts of Folk, again, another chance to close the gap at the top. Lost it. They are just not there. There's no chemistry in this team. There's no belief. They have a coach who seems to have issues with everything. Anytime they fail to win, he's got people to blame. Instead of <laughs> focusing on the football, Mm. And getting the boys to get to get used to his identity so that yeah. they will play for him and get results on his behalf. He's not focused on that. Okay? The, 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 if you watch them play, at times it's very, very pathetic. Lack of look, there's no consistency. Mm -hmm. You win today, you lose tomorrow, the next you don't win, you know, they shouldn't even get closer to the league title. Because if they do, they will not go and put up any decent rep. For this country already we are suffering mm -hmm. so we need <laughs> rep who will go to the continent you need credible of winners to, that is what i'm saying yeah. people mm. who are people who go and compete don't just go and lie low and be tumbled upon and stepped upon by the, the mm -hmm. those other teams in africa no we don't need it but look yeah. credit must be given to manaf that was a brilliant goal yeah. but did you see the quality mm -hmm. of the tamale pitch hmm. <laughs> making Football practically so difficult. Yeah. Something that is done. You see, Paul Scholes says something. He said football are not to be played by idiots. You have to use your common sense. Yeah. To play. But how do you expect the Ghanaian player to, play to use his yeah. common sense when the pitch that should enable him to control the ball yeah. is looking like this? Look at the way the ball is bouncing, bouncing on yeah. the pitch. So the strike from Manav, look, he wouldn't have done that if you give him another opportunity yeah. to do it. Because the ball was bouncing, oh. he was under pressure. Yeah, Let me just try and see what happens to it. That is what it is. How many times would he score such a goal? Yeah. Is everything so bad? This is one of our best pitches. This is our flagship. It's supposed to be one of Broda. our best pitches. Yeah. Look at the way it's looking. And this is our, our league. This is our No our, uniformity. Our no harmony. Nothing on the pitch. Very bad. Look at it. Very bumpy. Green patches. Brown patches. Brown, what is this? <laughs> it's, just, it's just sad. Let's 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 get to um, some foreign stuff there, or let's take a quick break. Actually, before we get to the foreign stuff, there's a lot to show you as far as the Premier League and Spain, uh, especially are concerned. Real Madrid were stunned, Arsenal were stunned, Chelsea Football Club were wondering how they cannot or they could not find the back of the net after all the money they spent this January. Let's take a quick break here. Scorecard, we'll be back on your screen. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. Let's now head to England and let's get to the Premier League. Chelsea started off the game week uh, with the game against Fulham Football Club and a London derby of some sorts. But the biggest uh, focus point was Enzo Fernandez, a hundred and six million pounds release clause paid from Benfica. A lot was expected of him, alongside the other big money signings that have come into the Chelsea fold. In the end, Todd Bowley was left. Uh, scratching his head. There were all sorts of poses from the director's box. We can't show you that though, but we can show you the highlights of this particular one. It ended goalless. We'll come back in here and try and make some sense of it. So Chelsea failing to um, hit the back of the net 
No, but let me come to you there. <laughs> Expectations are heightened at Stanford Bridge now for the manager, for the team itself. Um, were you surprised this game ended goalless? Well, I wasn't surprised, judging by how Fulham have been playing of mm. late. Um, I think was it two or three weeks ago where they went to Craven, Craven Cottage, Cottage. Yeah. and Joe Felix got the red card. Fulham money to win, so and they are they are above Chelsea. Yep. They are yep. above Liverpool. I yep. think they are seventh or eighth there about. So they've been playing some good football, and I've been particularly impressed with their coach. Mm. There were a lot of doubts about yeah. how he performed in the mm -hmm. league. He seemed mm -hmm. to have improved a lot of these players who two seasons ago in the league didn't do so well. They, they, could, they could overread uh, Mitrovic. Yeah. We all asked these questions. He comes to the league, he scored three or four goals the whole season. This season, he's already in double. I think he has scored 12 or 13 yeah. or so. Yep. He, he's, he's proven himself. So there's been a lot of improvement in the team. He's brought in William. He's brought in Pereira. So mm -hmm. he's put together a collection of players who are ready to fight for him. They mm. go out there to effectively perform the attacks. And they've been yeah. doing very, very well. I've been particularly impressed about with, with how they've played. And the marker they set from the beginning of the season, mm -hmm. that 3-3 draw against Liverpool, they should have actually won that game. And from then on, they've just been going in a smooth uh, um, trajectory. So for me, I've been particularly impressed with Fulham. Mm -hmm. I wasn't so surprised. For Chelsea, it's... A lot of new players, yes, they're talent in there, but yeah. as coach you say, Porter Ball, the correction is not there yet. <laughs> for me, I, I, I for, for me personally, I feel like any Chelsea midfield that doesn't have Kovacic in there, it's not, it's not their best midfield, then it will suffer. And mm. it's been evident that that midfield is lacking something. Up front, too, it seems like you've brought, you've brought in a striker, you've taken him out of your Champions League uh, yeah. team, you are not playing him regularly, there's been a lot of injuries. So there's, there's a lot of makeshift things going here and there. Mm. For Chelsea, the only thing you can probably be impressed about is how Thiago Silva at 37, 38 is still performing. And by the Asil, who's been partnered with him, has also been quite impressive. But for the rest of the team, they really need to put it together quickly because nobody else is going to come to your team if you are ninth or 10th because everybody wants to be playing in the Champions League. I don't know whether that's why they are trying to put all these players together so that they will uh -huh. suffer together. But for me, Fulham... They came in with a game plan. We are going to make it hard for you to penetrate mm -hmm. us. Havertz had two good opportunities where he could have scored, but that's been Havertz since he got to Chelsea. He mm. gets the chances he doesn't score. Maybe one cup final, he'll score yeah. to make you feel like he can do something. But they, they really need to put this team properly together. Or else we, they can bring in 30 more players. We will not achieve anything. But no one says they need to put this team properly together. Somebody will say they bought almost nine players during the January window. What do they need to do again? I agree with him, but it starts from who, who is in charge, isn't it? Hmm. Potter Ball is bombastic. <laughs> Potter Ball is fantastic. <laughs> Potter Ball is realistic. <laughs> Potter Ball is pluralistic. That is what they have gotten. Mm. You sack Thomas Tuchel, yeah. and you go and appoint Graham Porter. He's not up to that level. He's not gotten there. Mm. Because how on earth can you decide that Obama Young, Pierre Americ Obama Young, should be playing second fiddle? Yep. Somebody who is a specialist in the role. He has been made to sit on the bench and you are experimenting. You, you don't experiment with teams like Chelsea. Hmm. They've gone past that stage. Yeah. Since the Abramovich era, the standard has been set. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you are a coach and you are coming in to coach Chelsea, you don't go and do try and error. Mm -hmm. Let me try this to see how it works. Let me try it the next week to see how, how it works. Mm -hmm. You bench Kovacic, you play Galaha. Galaha. <laughs> because they, they, they say what? He's tenacious, he's aggressive, he's that. What? Football is not played by idiots. Yeah. You need to go to control and pass. Read the game and see what the ordinary mm -hmm. player... That mm -hmm. is why that is the pinnacle mm -hmm. of the game. You watch the game against Fulham. They look completely toothless up front. Because if you look at whatever they were doing, they, were, they, were, they had no full car point. Nope. If you are Chelsea, you don't have a full car point. Look, if you go to Spurs, yeah. the full car point is Hurricane. Hurricane. If you go to Man City, mm -hmm. they've got a full car point in Haaland. If you go to the, even the league leaders... They've yeah. got a four cup when in in in, in Ketia. Yeah. United had Ronaldo, there's Marcia who's struggling for injury. But now quickly. It's Rashford, so. There's Rashford. Mm -hmm. 
So all your competitors, they've got proper focal point. And you have decided that you will play without a focal point. Ah, even the master of the fourth nine has gone in for a renowned number nine. Mm -hmm. That manager who taught the whole world yeah. that he can play without a main striker and yet they win the league, he's going in for a number nine. Now, if you look at the brand of football in Ketia, <laughs> it's like there's no conviction. He hmm. spoke about Thiago Silva. As for him, look, I'm ready to argue and debate anybody that the likes of John Terry, Ferdinand, all of them included. Yeah. Thiago Silva has been the best center back in what I have seen in the past 15 to 16 yeah. years. Very Since his yeah. days at AC Milan. AC Milan. I've never seen a center back who is so smart and intelligent yeah. like that. Even at 38 years, look at what he's doing. He's the only bright spot within the team. He picks up the ball, he gives it to Enzo That's problematic Fernandez. if a 38-year-old is the bright spot in your team. <laughs> Enzo Fernandez picks up the ball and Galahai is closer to him. If he's running off him, he's running aimlessly with, without shaping himself to receive the pass. Hmm. <laughs> a core message would have positioned himself to and drive the ball yeah. forward. Kovacic can't play five games continuously. Then you, you, you brought this boy, the Modric boy, and you, you, you don't seem to use him. Look, the biggest problem of this Chelsea setup yeah. is the manager. Me, Coach Nimli, do I want them to sack him? It's a big no. <laughs> <laughs> he you needs mean? to remain at post. They've given him how many years, Ngetia? Five years, a five year. You can't just suck him. It's a process. You need to believe in the process. <laughs> Show conviction. So I applaud Todd Bowley. Stick with him. Mm. Because the English people believe that he's one of their own. And he's, you know, they think he has to come good. How many yeah. English managers do we have in the league so far? Sean Dutch just joined them. Yeah. There's the man from Newcastle. Yeah. Then, of course, the Northam Forest coach. Mm -hmm. then in terms of the bright spot, yeah. I think Eddie Howe and this man, yeah. Graham and Porter, the, the English bright and the English spot. bright spot. Well, so the one thing is that he's not... They, sh they should retain him there. No, but he has to stay. Let's <laughs> get to another game that caused a lot of trouble this weekend. Everton were at Goodison Park, and Sean Dyke had just taken over the team. Barely one week after he had taken over, it was not expected to be an easy game. Arsenal were hoping that they would pick up three points, continue their title charge. Everton had different ideas. Let's check out how this one broke down at the Goodison. So Everton inflicting Arsenal's only second defeat of the season. Uh, Nubo, quick thoughts on that game. Everton came in with a game plan. I like this new look Everton already. Well, uh, we all know how Shonda is going to play. Mm. Is either going to be a 4-5-1 or a 4-4-2? Yeah. He's going to surrender the wing to you. Anything you bring from the top will clear it. And that's how he set out to play. Funny enough, he's played with Tarkovsky before. He's yep. played with Martinez before. Yep. We know how dangerous they are going to be from set plays, throw-ins. And that's, how that's what they use to score. But then, looking at the corner, if you see the marking, Tarkovsky is a centre-back, one yep. of the tallest players. Yep. He's an aerial threat. And Odegaard is the one marking him. So, defensively, I'll prob to probably have to blame Ramsdale for not issuing instructions, setting up his defense very well. But then we don't know how further this is going to go. Maybe it's new manager bounce. But mm. then Sean Dyche, he's going to make Everton harder to beat. Hither to this game, I think they had gone seven or eight yep. games yep. Without, a win. without a win at home. Yep. So if he's, got, he's gotten a win for them, they are, I think, last but one from bottom. If he's able to keep them up in the Premier League, that would be a huge achievement for him. Hmm. Coach, yeah, so Arsenal. Um, I have a quick bite at Mikel Ateta. Look, why? I think yesterday he was the reason why Arsenal lost the game. Because if you look at what Sean Dyke did, it was simple. He went, mm -hmm. he, he completely moved away from the Lam Lampard uncertainty. Lampard was so uncertain, didn't know where to play mm -hmm. certain players. So Sean Dyke stuck to Ghana Gay and then the Corey in midfield and gave Onana the license to yeah. play behind the main man. But Onana would drop into midfield pick up the ball and run at the mm -hmm. Arsenal back line. It will be on the right and then McNeil on the left. Proper defensive cover, proper compactness. Mm -hmm. Now, on the part of Arsenal, how do you substitute Thomas Partey? He, he, was, he, he was a doubt coming No, but he was uh, re, uh, re, re report 
coming out of the Arsenal camp is that Partey was not substituted because of any injury situation. In Ateta's own tactical mm. estimation of the game, Partey was not a form. I have watched this game. In fact, I watched the game just before coming yeah. here. And that was shocking to me. Because if you compare Partey and Jaka yesterday, mm -hmm. Partey was 20 times better than Jaka. And look at the irony. He took Partey, the moment he did the substitution, the first Everton move mm -hmm. through the middle, mm -hmm. which Jorginho couldn't prevent, let resulted in the corner kick and then that back, back. Go, yeah. and they, that was it. Yep. Partey was passing the ball all right. Partey was anticipating better and stepping in to control the game. Now, it is so if you think your team is not doing well, why do you pinpoint your star player to be the reason why the team is not doing well? He's your star player. So mm -hmm. what do you do? You have to keep him in there. Even when the team is not performing, he's the last person you should be looking at substitute. Exactly. Hmm. It's like the Argentina coach taking Messi to the World Cup. You say, Argentina is not performing. Yeah, and Messi, Messi come and sit down. What? Who does that? <laughs> Who, nobody would do that. And the moment he went away from that, he got them exposed. And then on the corner kick, nobody spoke about the goalkeeper. Yeah. But if you look at the manner in which they defended the corner kick, you see, Everton had Calvin Lewin, Tarkovsky, Kodakodi, and then um, Dakore. Those are yeah. big guys. And in, then in uh, the box. Onana. Onana. Yeah. They had oh, five yeah. big guys in the box. If you look at the Arsenal presentation, <laughs> again, one reason why he shouldn't have substituted party. Yes, but he has hype. They had Magaresh. Saliba, yeah. Thomas Party, to some extent Jacka, yeah. and then it's finished. The rest will always be manhandled by the natural bulldozers. And if you look at the manner in which Odegaard, I mean, he was just manhandled. Tarkovsky held him up, <laughs> and Odegaard's back was always facing the trajectory of the ball. Mm -hmm. Whilst he held him, he was looking at the ball. He didn't even join the ball, just came and bam yeah. into the back of the net. But the truth is that that Everton set in a set piece situation yes. would win against nine out of ten Premier League no, teams. But, but I think yes, it's even a tactic Sean Dyke used. Yes. The corner is floated to the edge of the six to yard the edge box. Of the six yard so so any touch is going in, it goes mm. in straight. Mm. That is why you have to be smart in the disbursement of your duty. You have to be smart. Mm. And for me, look, I've gone to the some of the. Arsenal side, they were all blamed, they are blaming Ateta for that party change. Mm. And as a stand, they should be very, very thankful to Tottenham today. <laughs> because I believe that if Man City had closed that gap to two points, yeah. Game over. there would be serious jittery. Because look, mm. as we sit here, you yeah. fancy a Man City against Arsenal if this thing were to go neck, neck, neck. neck, neck. Yeah. Like we saw Man City Liverpool go at each other. Yeah. Some few seasons where I think Man City won by one point, the following season Liverpool won by one or two points. If if anything of the soul were to happen, this Arsenal team will collapse. Hmm. Let me read a few messages coming through and then we'll check out that Man United Crystal Palace game. So this one here uh, from Sir Ike from Goma Francis says, Congratulations to my darling club Man United for being the only big club to win this weekend. Uh, in England, my regards to Coach Chris, aka Ni Aba. Uh, this one here is from Shaban from Krobo Odumase. He's I'm a die-hard Liverpool fan, and for uh, some time now, I hardly get excited watching these abysmal performances from Liverpool. Please tell Coach we need him to coach Liverpool for us. <laughs> it will be one day. So over to you. They will lose take, many take matches. Take the club job. I will intentionally <laughs> make sure they lose. <laughs> uh, coach Richard. Liverpool. <laughs> from Teshi says, trust me, Ben, the game I watched at the Chan final, uh, it was it was good the Galaxies were eliminated earlier or else it would have been total humiliation for us. Um, this one here uh, is from Al Hassan, a.k.a. Hambo Lion from Go uh, Kaswa Papase, I think that's what it is. He says, look, Pep cannot be changing his winning team uh, and still be expecting to win. He's not Ten Hag, but for Chelsea, dear, hmm. Their worst is yet to come. United all the way. Greetings to you guys um, out there. Okay. Uh, this one, Andrews Quist from Tema Community 2 uh, says that, uh, good evening, Ben and team. Uh, I'm happy tonight. Why? Because my team, Arsenal, lost. And Man City also lost tonight, thanks to Spurs. So, Arsenal fans thanking City 
our, our thought now for that good gesture there. Um, this one here says, if I was there, I would let Ghanaians choose their coach as their GFA. Uh, okay, I, I can't really make sense of that message, so sorry I can't read that. Charles Inside Kede uh, says, please, I want to know if an individual can sue the FA. Ghana football and the best Baba Rahman and Kofi Koji <laughs> administration there. Hmm. Uh, Yao from Sprintex says, looking at the despicable state of the Tamale Stadium, it saddens hearts that $100,000 um, was pocketed. Ghana football is indeed sick and needs an emergency operation. So a lot of fans not too happy with the state of Ghana football. Let's get to Old Trafford and let's check out that game between Man United and Crystal Palace. Uh, Crystal Palace came close in the end. They didn't have enough to get over the line. Good news though, Ghana's Jeffrey Schlopp was on the score sheet. So Jeffrey Schlopp getting what was supposed to be a catalyst goal to spare Palace on in the end. It wasn't enough. I, I blame Michael Olise for Palace failing to get on the on, on level terms because he had a lot of opportunities. Every ball in the final minutes was concentrated down his end. He couldn't take on a single player. He didn't beat a single player. He scored the equalizer in the last game, but this time around, it was just not to be. Coach, quick, just quick thoughts on that game. Yes. United winning a very difficult game. They looked like they were going to crumble. They just had enough to hold it to the end. A season or two ago, mm -hmm. they would have thrown that away. Mm. Because they would have been led by Harry Maguire, <laughs> Lindelof, <laughs> McCormany. <laughs> Why are <you> laughing? <laughs> Yeah, they would have thrown that away. Maguire is my captain. And of course, he, and he's not been given the first. It shots. would have been Ole, not <laughs> having the clue. But yeah. yesterday you saw what Ten Hag did. I think he he won the game mm. because at a point in time we want to credit Patrick Vieira after yeah. the red card to Casemiro. Of course, mm -hmm. a deserved well, red, card, red yeah. card in my view. You cannot be this silly. Next time he's too experienced to have done what he did. But of course, after that red card, all the tactical switches that. Vera did mm -hmm. was to make sure United were restricted in their half. Mm -hmm. So Palace started creating chances upon chances upon chances. So quickly, a coach who is pragmatic, a coach who is thinking <laughs> on the job, yeah. is very, and also very, very, very proactive in Ten Hag, quickly realized that no, he needed more natural defenders mm -hmm. in the game. So at a point in time, United had Luke Shaw, Martinez. Yeah. Veran, Maguire, and mm. Lindelof yeah. all on the pitch. And then he had Sabitza, Fred, Rashford, and Nicole. So it was a clear coaching tactics on the part of the United manager to mm -hmm. make sure that mm -hmm. that two goal lead is preserved because they knew that Arsenal had lost. Yeah. I've already said here that we don't believe United will win the league. Mm -hmm that if Asna and Man City were to misbehave a bit, when I say misbehave <laughs> a bit, like like this weekend, like they <laughs> did, anything like that again in the next week or two, mm -hmm. knowing that the two teams will be playing against each other back to back, mm -hmm. United will have a keen interest on where the league title goes. Mm. Because at the end of the day, as we speak, yeah. they are, I think, eight points off Arsenal. Yeah. And that, in my view, with about 17 more games to go, that's a lot. lot that's, that's, that's a lot eternity. of football. Lots of football. Yeah. Yeah. With the two ahead of them, with the two to ahead of them playing each other. Imagine Man City were to draw against Arsenal back to back. A United were to win. Boom! It's a three horse race <laughs> right there. So everything has been done. Yeah. And look, Ten Hag must be credited that for the quality of work. Look at the football. Look at that second goal. Proper patience. Proper build up from yeah. left. To the but, I, but I need you to say with your chest that United will win the league. <laughs> no, 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 I look no, no. at your squad. There's nothing preventing you from. No, no, no. He's, he's just been in the job so for less than six months. It doesn't matter. It's it not matters. Like, no, you are you are in the fight. No, but if that you are in the fight now. It, it matters. Targets were set, but you can upgrade your targets. That's as what I'm saying. That on. I'm not saying I would. I say if the two teams misbehave. were to misbehave, mm. misbehave here in quotes, okay, they will have a keen interest, okay, on where the league title goes. Solid enough. Quick thoughts. Um. Palace, uh, I mean, on Palace, I, I thought they, they really threw, I thought they threw this game away. They had enough to have gotten something from this game. Yeah, and United saw the threat they had, mm. and they prepared for it, but Palace didn't effectively do anything. Elise was getting the ball, 
so, I mean, I you have so United camped in their A team, and there were so many passes before yeah. the ball. Yeah. How many crosses did they even put in there? Yeah. You had Mateta on the pitch. You had United painting, putting crosses, put their defense under some form of pressure. Nope. They didn't do any of that. And I, I think the last, the last opportunity of the game, Olisi, no pressure. Ball is played to you. And just who says to the stand. It. Yeah. But I, 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 I do think this is proper coaching. And, and you can see, if you look at that United team that lost against Brentford, Mm -hmm. And the United team playing now, you think it's about a year or so apart, but it's, it's just the six, season. seven months. Yeah. So you can actually see that this team has been fine tuned to play according to Ten Hag's music, and they are doing very well. One Bissaka improvement. Yep. It, you, you, you would, would you ever think one Bissaka would actually bring a ball inside for it to <laughs> result in the goal? <laughs> we probably run at the bar line and then cross into the stand. One Bissaka actually looks like he knows what to do exactly. when he crosses into the opponent's half now. And he, that's and that's he where moves into midfield and then yeah. do it there. there. <laughs> now you saw when we <laughs> played against Man City, what he did on the equalizing goal. He, he brought them and damn it, two or three I'm, second I'm, players. I'm, I'm and the supporters there say, <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually shocked at the things one Bissaka oh, yeah, is doing this. But I mean, that's what yeah. proper coaching, coaching does. Yeah. Because coaching. Naturally, defensively, he has no flaws. When it comes to pushing the ball, he will slide mm. Takui. But offensively, he was lacking in a lot. But he's, over the Gradually past month, up, yeah. he's, he's, there, there have been some massive improvements. And, mm. and that's testament to the good coaching by Ten Hag. Good coaching by Ten Hag. Let's, let's take a break here. And then when we come back, we have more highlights for you. We have Liverpool versus Wolves. We have Manchester City versus Tottenham as well to come. So there's a lot more to chew on on the show. Stay with us here on Scorecard. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. Let's continue with the Premier League um, highlights. Let's get to the Molyneux where Wolverhampton Wanderers were up against Liverpool. And if you thought that you had seen the worst of Liverpool this season, well, think again. They sunk to a new low this particular weekend. Wolves completely dragged Liverpool all over the place. Check this one out. So Wolves doing with Liverpool as they wished. <laughs> just, yeah, they, they, I mean, they did as they wanted in that game. It was one of their... And guess what? Wolves were the lowest scoring side in the league heading into this game. They had scored just 12 goals all season. They scored three against, against Liverpool, Liverpool, including two in the opening 12 minutes. It's like every week, Liverpool look for another opportunity to show us how bad they can be. <laughs> that is what it seems to me. Yeah. So you, go, yeah. you go back to the Brighton game. Then club came to say, oh, that's the worst performance I've seen. Yeah. Then the next week they are trying to tell that we can be worse than we were last week. Yeah. I think everything is just falling apart for Liverpool. For mm. me, right from the beginning of the season, I was saying that I think this team has maxed out. This group of players, for whatever they can achieve with this coach, yeah. I think they've done it. For the seven years he's been there, for the greater part of the last four years, mm -hmm. I think they've maxed out. Last season was everything they had. They put it in there and yeah. it amounted to two out of four trophies. Winning the lower trophies and, li and losing the bigger ones. I think they've maxed out. I, <coughs> I was doing some form of comparison. If you mm -hmm. look at 2018-19, mm -hmm. the last game of that season, the yeah. City squad that played that game. And you look at last season, the City squad that played that game. Mm -hmm. Out of that 18-man squad, only seven have been retained at City. Hmm. Liverpool have 11. Yeah. So this team, for the past, for the greater part of four years, have been going at it, gang gang pressing, running all over the pitch, and it's not like we are, Liverpool is doing anything new. Yeah. The players same just tactics. Same tactics. Yeah, the club actually approach. doesn't change approach. Same approach. His 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 blind loyalty to the players. He feels they can do their job, and that's what is happening. It's not that they are doing anything different. Their bodies just cannot fully affect what club wants them to do, and it's been clearly evident. The pressing, you can look at how the pressing starts, the passing mm -hmm. starts, the number of times Liverpool is winning the ball in the final third when they lose it. All those things are down because the players just don't have it in them. And he has enough credit in the bank. He comes, he presses, he talks. Like, even you look at his demeanor on the touchline, he doesn't look like someone who is under pressure because no. they are still going to suck him. Oh. And there's a lot going on in the boardroom, in the background, and all those things. Yeah. But I do believe that this... FSG trying to sell the team. Trying to sell the backroom team. Backroom staff members not happy. happy. Some people, there's, there's even rumors that Klopp is not the coach. It's Pep Lingus who is doing everything. He has written a book. L like, there's so much... There's so much circus yeah. around Liverpool now. But for me, I think personally, the, the, the coach doesn't have it in him to inspire this team again. Yeah. They're not playing to his tune. They, they go into games. Nobody fears them now. I mean... 
Brighton put three past you. Yeah. Brighton, I thought that was the worst. Brighton put five past you in like a space of ten days. Yeah. Over over the two legs. Mm-hmm. Brighton has scored six goals against Liverpool. Would you believe that? Brighton. Brighton. Brighton who were struggling to score goals. Brighton who sold Trossard. Coach, <laughs> talk to me about Manchester City. They they were supposed to close the gap on Arsenal today after Arsenal lost. Strange. Because Tottenham are not a team I expected to give Manchester City issues, but in the end, it proved to be a more difficult game than we expected. Yeah, so Spurs going to the game mm-hmm. also knew that they had to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because don't forget, they also are in Champions League football. Oh, true. And they were the home team. And don't forget, some few weeks back, they had thrown away a 2 0 lead against the same Man City mm-hmm. team. And if you listen to their their manager, not Antonio Conte, the mm-hmm. one who deputized mm-hmm. for Antonio Conte because he's ill, recovering from a surgery. Yeah. He made it very clear that when they lost 4-2 mm. to Man City, when they went back as a team, the coaching staff, mm. together with the playing body, when they analyzed why they lost, it's like they decided they didn't want to suffer enough. Mm. When you're playing against Man City, yeah. be it home and away, when you're playing against Arsenal, be it home and away, or away, you should be ready to suffer. Hmm. Remember some few weeks ago, yeah, we I said that if United really want to win against mm-hmm. Arsenal at mm-hmm. the Emirates, they should be ready, ready to, to suffer. suffer. So one Spurs didn't see the need to suffer enough, but throwing away a 2-0 lead, that in my view was the beginning of the motivation. Hmm. The players who go into this game knowing that they, if they can do a little more than they did, yeah. they will get the result. And what was so appalling was the fact that Pep Guardiola also made it very easy for them hmm. in his team selection. Hmm. You don't bench Gundahan in such a game. You don't bench Kevin De Bruyne. Look, after the game, mm-hmm. I stayed back when the DSTV panelist was mm-hmm. going through the analysis. Mm-hmm. We counted four occasions where had Kevin De Bruyne been on the pitch, mm-hmm. the ball would have gone to Haaland one time and he would have tacked it. Mm. Kyle Walker had the opportunity, he didn't do it. Maris had the opportunity, he didn't, didn't do it. And um, Bernardo Silva had the opportunity, he didn't do it. And then I think the young man, Lewis, Lewis. had the opportunity, he all didn't do it. And therefore, in today's game, Haaland didn't touch the ball in the 18-yard box. The entire 90. Of space. That's crazy. That is unacceptable. Yeah. If I'm the manager, I'm going to go ballistic. I'm mm-hmm. going to cut. Look, man. But then you don't expect the manager of his caliber to know better. I mean, exactly. you observe for 70 minutes, 60 minutes, you need to do something about exactly. it. Exactly. And when he actually introduced Kevin De Bruyne into mm-hmm. the game, but then Spurs now had read the situation better. They know that De Bruyne doesn't mm-hmm. need a second touch mm-hmm. before whipping in those very appetizing crosses <laughs> so any time the ball went to De Bruyne, mm-hmm. they had three players in and around Haaland one mm-hmm. person making sure that he's not going to jump well mm-hmm. the other person practically attacking the ball the third person holding him and making sure that he's been checked and mm-hmm. that in my view was proper coaching yeah. I saw a much 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 more better catenatial system from from an Italian manager mm. who was sitting in for his main boss and making it very delicious for the yep. boss to watch. Yep. And what even blew my mind after the game, Harry Kane now is the all time leading goal scorer in the history of Spurs. Mm-hmm. Uh, after the games, um, Harry Kane was in the dressing room and Antonio Conte called him all the way from Italy. Yeah. And the camera was on him. Yeah. Harry Kane was referring to boss, when are we going to see? Are we going to see you on Wednesday? And Conte congratulated him yeah. for the record. Is it? And at, uh, Conte <laughs> assured him that God willing, on Wednesday he's going to he's going to be back to meet the team. But hey, Ateta will be happy. <laughs> he's not lost ground on his closest yeah. rival. Harry Kane, I I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. It's great to be Spurs all-time goal scorer, but these goals need to count for something at the end yeah. of the day. <laughs> have to be, he need to now he be to, match it with some tangible. He needs to be able to yeah. hold something yeah. and say that yeah. because of my goal scoring prowess. Yeah. We got this trophy, or we got that trophy. Yeah, are seriously looking at him. Big one. We see that one happens. Let's get to uh, the Spanish La Liga. Let's get to Real Madrid's camp. They were stunned this weekend. They were hoping to get their season back on track. 
But Mallorca had other plans. Real Madrid losing this one by a slim margin. Let's watch this one. So, boy, just quick thoughts on that Real Madrid uh, defeat. It's it's struggle after struggle for them yeah. this season. I, I thought that after the World Cup, they would figure things out, get the season back on track. They seem to be dropping points in very odd games. Uh, there's something that's just not right with this team. Um, hmm. They, I think they've, they they've didn't lost spend any money in the January window as well. Maybe they thought they were okay with the squad they had. I mean, there's there's enough quality in there to be able to go out there and beat Mallorca. There's there's True. something True. that is that's missing in this team, and and it even makes it more interesting now looking at that Liverpool Real Madrid tie. <laughs> the two teams struggling to yeah. to put some decent per um, performances together in the league. But for me. Madrid, if they don't get it together soon enough, it looks like Barca are running. Because Barca won, I think they are now seven or so points ahead. Mm -hmm. if, they, if it gets to 10, they are not catching them. If it gets to mm. 10, they are not catching you them. sure about that? Based on how Barca are playing now, I don't think they'll be able to catch them. Let's go to the Italian Serie A. And let's catch up first of all with AS Roma versus Empoli. And then we'll do Spezia versus Napoli. Napoli look like they're running away with the Serie A at this point. Back-to-back -back highlights. We'll come back to the studio. So Varadzvelia and Osimen doing the business for Napoli. Tammy Abraham doing the business for AS Roma. Coach, let's talk about AS Roma gradually rising up the table. And they've not had a lot of money to invest in their team either. Yeah, credit to Jose. I think um, he needed to move away from the EPL to resurrect his career. I, I need him at Liverpool. Yeah, of course. And, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and we are hearing that even the people at Chelsea are actually looking at him. Again, mm. yes. Patri. Patri. <laughs> oh, my because goodness. I, I think he's one of those coaches who, are, who is being prepared mm. to take over from Grand Porter if he doesn't. Because I'm very certain that if you no, give... No, we, we like Porter where he is. No, if you, of course. If you give Jose this crop of Chelsea, Chelsea players, yeah. I think he would do something mm. decent with them. But on the part of Roma, I think he's not been happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he believes that if they have given him enough money... Yeah. To invest in this... He can compete, compete with Napoli. And the Inter mm -hmm. Milan. Mm -hmm. It's like you look at the the Roma setup. It's like the other teams are just better than them yeah. in terms of quality, yeah. in terms of play. So the Roma team is virtually there's very right. little coaching can do. You can do mm -hmm. to that. You can get your tactics right, prepare the material at your disposal. Where you go and put them in there, it depends on what how far their quality can get them to go. And for me, Jose has done a tremendous job. I think the main aim is to see whether he can get them back into the Champions League. Yeah. And, and from the way things are going, from the performances of AC Milan, <laughs> I think that fourth spot, mm -hmm. because now too with the Juventus issue, yeah. they are third in the league now. Point, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you, you can <coughs> expect that it's an opportunity that Jose will not let slip by. Mm. And from the way they are playing, I think they all they should ensure yeah. is very clear that when they meet the Napoli, they will get beat. When they meet the Inter Milan, they'll get beat. But the Those two games aside, win, they should win the other games. Clear the rest, and you'll be in the top four. Hmm. Well, quick, quick thoughts on Napoli. They, are, they haven't quite the season. It looks like <laughs> they bought players a lot of people didn't know about. I mean, yeah. even by Victor Simon, he was not somebody we, we called world class in yeah. Europe. The big teams were not. All of the for them to have, I think yeah. they spent over 40 million oh, exactly. euros on him. For mm -hmm. them to have, whoever recommended Osimen yeah. for them. He's been an absolute Oscar. monster for them. For me, I've been particularly impressed with Spalletti. He's had a go at trying to win the league with Roma, Roma and yeah, some I other remember. teams, and he was even at Inter, he yeah. was unable to do that. But then, if you look at Napoli and you look back at maybe two, three seasons ago where they had Mertens and all those players, mm -hmm. they shipped them out. I was thinking it would take them probably another year or two to get to that level. But then he brought in some there's Kim, there's Labotka, Carasvilia, yep. and for that period where they've been together, they've put them together some way, somehow, and they are performing wonderfully well. Osimen is unstoppable. He's a beast. Mm. And now, Napoli is more like a sure bet. If they go into any game with any of the teams yeah. outside Inter, you know they are going to beat even them. Even the Euro. Home even or the away. Champions League. You yeah. The Champions say, League. It's not even just yeah. a league thing. They've been, I mean, if you look at especially that Liverpool game, it was, as, it was like boys against men. They, <laughs> they literally <laughs> tore Liverpool apart. Yep. The Ajax games, both home and away. Toy Ajax apart. So they are really I, I, I'm I'm surprised at how fast they've emerged. I was yeah. thinking it would take them maybe a year or mm -hmm. two, but Spalletti is proving that if you give him proper materials, 
he, he could do something. There are 13 point. There's a 13 point gap between them and Inter. I don't mm -hmm. see them. Um, um, I don't see them relinquishing that league. Mm. But for me, maybe the league is done. Let's see what they can do in the Champions, in the Champions league. league. Let me read a few messages coming through. Um, Marcus from Tema says, "I love this coach, man. Keep it up." Um, this right here, Evans from Brecum says, hmm, "Liverpool, everything will be all right." Uh, <laughs> this right here, I don't know if that's how things work. <laughs> Evans. Evans says, "Good evening, guys." Bola from Kaswa says, "Arsenal will win the league this season." Pique from Tepa says that, um, "Good evening, Ben and crew. I'm really happy Real Madrid dropped points and Barca have opened up the gap. Congrats to Xavi." Uh, Coach Chris is always right about everything he just says. I really like his tactical um, breakdowns. Kweku from Amasaman says, I'm enjoying the discussion this evening. Tell Coach he's looking like the next minister of sports. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You see, if you give me that job, the people at the FA will suffer. Oh, Charlie. They will suffer big time. You when mean, they bring you those, out, ah, those outrageous budgets, you know, man floor me. <laughs> Della <laughs> says, um, Mepewache 3 CD from Tamale. I believe that Casemiro acquired that red card after grabbing the neck of Will Hughes. Maguire was on the bench smiling and saying, that is my humble student, but you will still need lessons. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is all about. Isaac Afedo from Medina says, Blacko said it all to we Chelsea and Liverpool fans that this season is going to be dark and difficult for all of us. Um, Amani um, from Shredder says that, good evening. My point is that if Arsenal is losing, Man United cannot win all their matches. Mm. Um, this one says, Nunez is Liverpool's problem. <laughs> uh, this one also says, hi, congrats to Ten Hag's boys for such an incredible performance. Fred from Kumase with that one. A lot more messages coming through. Um, Farrell from Ejiso says, Senegal deserve to win the Chan. And the youngster, uh, Lemi Kamara, should have been awarded the best player. Um, this one is from Jaden Sancho. It says that, uh, good evening to the crew. By the end of the season, United will be second on the league log. Okay. Uh, more messages. This one here coming through um, says that, okay, I think I read this one already. Um, okay, I read this one already. Let's, let's get some more highlights. Let's go to Germany. Let's check out Freiburg versus Borussia Dortmund. Dortmund made light work of Freiburg in this one by Munich. After drawing last week, returned to winning ways against Wolfsburg this weekend. 4 2 is how that game broke down. So let's get the highlights from the German Bundesliga. So the youngsters gradually taking over the football game. You saw Karim Adeyemi for Borussia Dortmund, uh, Julian Brandt as well. And then I seen Jamal Musiala scoring an absolutely brilliant individual effort there for Bayern Munich. No more quick thoughts on that one. Bayern um, bouncing back. Yeah. And the funny thing is, for all the struggles they've been going through, they've only lost one game, and they are still top of the league. So, yeah. I, I think it's, it's, it's like the bonus league is always dead on arrival. Yes, Dortmund will look like they will challenge, mm -hmm. and then they will end up maybe three, seven or eight points behind Bayern. I think it's a no contest, but I would want to see what what happens after this season. There's, there are some one or two rumors whether they will change names or something. It's like Bayern have been changing coaches now mm -hmm. as, as if mm -hmm. they are Chelsea. But for the league, I think it's, it's done and dusted. Hmm. Union Berlin, maybe they'll have a shout in there. They'll get Champions League, but as to whether they'll, they'll be able to stop Bayern, I doubt that strongly. Hmm. Hmm. Good, just quick thoughts on the Bundesliga. Uh, Dortmund winning by five goals to one. Very typical of the Bundesliga. Yeah. It's never been goal shy, isn't it? It's been hmm. guaranteed. Week in, week out, there will be goals all over, all over the place. And for me, um, it is the manner in which the defending that is of worry mm -hmm. um I, d I really don't fa I, I really don't enjoy when too many goals are scored in a football game i i, I can tell I really <laughs> yeah, don't like I mean. because i wanted them to be very competitive <laughs> 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 like everybody plays the highlights <laughs> for, the the people who pay money to go to the pitch they want to see goals <laughs> <laughs> yeah they want to see but as a tactical man yeah. mm -hmm. managers don't like, don't like, it like games with a lot no, of goals at all. So, so, some of the goals um, you scored too, you that's one of the reasons why personally i really don't fancy the german league but i enjoy it when their teams come to the champions league mm. and attempt to meet mm. that level of resistance and then they are able to perform you understand so i think next week or when, when the champions league return is Bayern versus PSG. yeah i want to see how they perform mm. i want to see how they can keep the likes of Neymar, Messi, yeah. Mbappe at bay whilst they try to break the wall of 
Verratti, Marquinhos, mm. then you'll be watching competitive. They'll Better look, test. They'll win the league. No, two. I don't see mm. anything stopping them. Well, my good friend Atu Elzinga here. He says he's watching his scorecard with his dad. He says he's asking what socks is coach wearing. Somebody's admiring your socks. Atu <laughs> says what socks are you wearing? But I have another request here for you, coach. Somebody <laughs> says that you need. He needs you to commit Chelsea into the presence of the Lord. He sees that you are a powerful man of God. <laughs> so he needs you to commit Chelsea because where no. things are going now for Chelsea. You see, uh, my wife supports Chelsea. A yeah. quick prayer for them. But <laughs> it's not the team I pray good for. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you was about. Oh. And the porter. Honey, to me. Chelsea. Honey, to me. We be to me. Yeah, you used to buy me. Amen. So Chelsea Football Club, that's your prayer there. <laughs> Coach says that he, he he can't find a way to give you a good prayer. No, but just quick thoughts on your, your pick of the lot from the weekend's action of sports. For me, I think it's the Spurs mm. City game. And I, I just checked that Hurricane was the man of the match. But for me personally, Emerson Royal was the man of the match. Yeah, mm. he had a Everything Jagulish threw at him. Yes, on occasion Jagulish got be beyond him. But for the okay. majority of the game, he kept him at bay. It's one of the reasons why City could not penetrate that side to really mm -hmm. um, disturb the Tottenham defence. But for me, I think he was very impressive. There's been a lot. We, we question his defending more often than yeah. not and how sometimes he loses concentration. But today, he was he was A+. Top game for me. So that's, that's, that's my pick of the weekend. Mm. Liverpool, it was expected. We already knew what was going to happen. Exactly. Liverpool Football Club still struggling. Um, let me see if I can read a few more messages before... Um, Nelson Dino from Nigeria says, uh, Man U for the title. I can't believe it. That's what I, I wanted to say. <laughs> Nelson Dino from Nigeria says that he wants Man United to win the title. Um, this one here says, It's been a while uh, hearing um, the word size 50. Seth from Kumasi. <laughs> He's uh, on the bench. Yeah. You see, a, pro a proper <laughs> coach has come. <laughs> They've relegated him to the bench. Three minutes, five minutes, three <laughs> minutes, five. That's what Thank you very doing. much, Coach. It's always a pleasure. A -A 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 Ni Aba. Aba. Thank you very much, Emmanuel Lubo, uh, for joining us on the show today. Thank you uh, to everybody who did uh, the viewing uh, with us today. And all of you who sent in messages, we appreciate it very, very much. To thank to the directors, to lights, uh, camera, uh, everybody else who helped the show uh, to happen. Same time next week, you know where to find us on City TV.